running order is Pam Holstein. And uh, Pam is going to tell us about Lomography, which I think I've pronounced right, but I probably haven't. Um, and I'm sure she'll set me straight. Um, I think it's something to do with cameras. But uh, no doubt all will become clear when uh, Pam tells about that. Okay, I'll tell you a bit about Lomography. I'll try and give you a brief overview um, of this movement. It's a lo-fi um, analog photographic movement which started in Vienna about 20 years ago when a group of students discovered some um, Soviet cameras that were quite poorly made. They, um, they let in light. They had a lot of faults. They had strange lenses and produced bizarre effects, but they sort of ran with that. And over time, it's become a movement. Um, the people who originally discovered the cameras got the worldwide distribution rights. And then they started to add to this by producing other models, which you might know as the toy cameras. So they do a range such as uh, panoramics, fish eyes, uh, spinners, which do a 360-degree view. I mean, I think the thing that's quite interesting is that this movement sort of began around about the time that digital cameras are coming into sort of the main part of everybody's lives. And over the years when we've got used to using digital cameras, we take more photographs than ever, but we're so used to sort of getting the perfect photograph and then deleting all the ones that aren't quite right and then taking them into Photoshop. And you might say, once we've got Photoshop and the GIMP and Instagram, well, why shoot film? And I think the Lomography movement, they've, they've produced 10 rules which I haven't just committed to memory because, you know, I like a bit of anarchy. So, but they're basically around shooting from the hip, um, not thinking too far ahead about what you're doing, not worrying about what you're taking, moving on to the next subject, and, you know, just being fast and getting close to your subject. So some of the photographs on here are some that I took, and some of them are from the Lomography website. And they sort of showcase some of the things that you can do. So you can do double exposures, now, I couldn't do that on Photoshop. Some people probably could. For me, life's too short. So it's not anti-technology. It's just bringing a bit of fun and spontaneity back into photography by pointing and clicking and not being quite sure what you're getting and having to wait uh, to, for processing. Um, and then some of the things you can do, you can start to abuse the film a bit. So this is an example of cross-processing where you can take a slide film and develop it in chemicals designed for color negatives so you get a very sort of strong colors um, the other way of cross processing is to take that backwards and to process um, negative film and slide chemicals and then you get very sort of washed out colors with like blues and yellows being predominant uh, depending on that's an example of um, taking the other way taking on sprocket rocket with a double exposure so you get very washed out colors and blues and greens very predominant um, and you get a very high failure rate with this because you can't see what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. But you get a lot of fun as well. That's an example of a red scale where you can shoot on the back of film. And so, although you need to have quite a long exposure to let more light in, you get very red predominant images. And there's so, it's quite unlimited what you can do with it. Um, there's other things like you can sort of you can sort of get these cameras which have like four or eight lenses so they'll take photographs in sequence so it's almost like a, a my bridge type of um, effect that's an example of one which is a double exposure which is then being cross-processed in um, in negative chemicals um, and then the, the, you can take them out at night you can get um, color splash flashes so you can add color again on top of whatever cross-processing you might be doing and the, I suppose the reason why I'm saying this is that I, I do this. I started doing this quite a long time ago. I had a panoramic camera, and then I added to it with a fisheye and then recently um, a super sampler. And um, I know one other person in Liverpool that does this. Um, and we were talking about having an exhibition. So I know a lot of photo photographers come to Ignite, and I was thinking if there's anybody out there who's quite interested in doing this or you already do it and we don't know about it, um, there's an opportunity to exhibit your work at the um, Headspace Gallery in the Egg in the autumn. 
so you can get in touch with them. It's very easy if you're interested to get one of these cameras. You don't have to go to the Lomography website and pay £12 to have your stuff shipped from Vienna. You can get them in Urban Outfitters in Liverpool 1. They have many of the Diana's the, um, fisheye cameras. You can also get them on eBay quite cheaply as well. And Moorfields Photographic on Tarth Barn Street will do cross-processing and they're quite good at offering advice as well. So there's some information if you want to know more. Perfectly timed as well, kind of like, you know, before the slides are finished, I'm impressed. Um, thank you very much for that, Pamela. Um,